did you get into it? Uh, building cars my whole life. So I've been playing with the cars for a long time. Um, then I built that truck. So it was about four years ago, that one. Um, I was, yeah, I was still plumbing at the time, so I was a plumber full time. Um, and then he got the notches done on that, and then basically I just took it home and finished it. Um, that led to a lot of jobs, a lot of people asking for work. Um, eventually I just said yes, quit plumbing, and now there's four of us full time building trucks. This is my truck. It was a original right hand drive Australian truck. It's, it's inside since 1985. Um, so we basically got it um, up like three hours north of Dubbo or something like that. Um, and then, yeah, basically just brought it back and just did a bunch of um, metal finishing, try and bring it back to life. It was pretty dead. Um, and then, yeah, then obviously the frame's notched. Um, yeah, interior's done by uh, Adrian at Cool Trim. Um, yeah, and obviously fully vast engineered, um, blue plated. How did you go into, um, like, designing your own, like, the, the, with CAD? Um, yeah, yeah, with CAD and to the, to the extent you are now. Yeah, cool. So I, I had to learn CAD, which was an interesting task. I'm um, starting off by myself, um, basically doing everything. Um, so I learned CAD, got that across the line, did a, did a couple of, um, we'll call them a bit more basic than they are now. Um, Julian now works for us full time doing CAD work. Um, so he's amazing at that. And uh, basically, without that, you know, obviously the team wouldn't, you know, where every one of us in here is a, is a piece to the pie. So. But yeah, Julian's definitely um, the full time CAD designer now. I just <laughs> point some fingers at it. <laughs> so basically, you started with 56. Yeah, we started with the, the first job was a 56 F100, um, and then it sort of led into nearly every F100 that's under 1980. Um, and then now we're moving into all the Chevys as well. So we've got some 3100s. There's a C10 coming up. Um, yeah. Okay, so this one's a 77 F100, um, short wheelbase, full frame replacement. Um, basically everything underneath is brand new, um, so yeah, four length rear, um, 460 big block, two piece tail shaft, custom tunnel, pretty much the standard sort of situation that's happening on most of these trucks. Um, we use QA1 shocks, um, all of our front end geometry is in house design, um, engineered as well, so that's the biggest thing that with our, with our stuff that we're pushing really hard is our vast engineers have worked really hard to get it across the line. Um, so yeah, that's probably the, the biggest thing, that the biggest question that we get is um, how is that possible? But yeah, obviously it is. So, yeah, cool. So yeah. basically, yeah, full custom stainless exhaust. Um, there's only one we've done in steel. I think everyone wants, wants stainless. So cross pipe, this one's got some little um, hot dogs through the middle there. They're basically getting removed later, so some cutoffs. Um, these exit in front of the wheels, um, custom headers. Basically, yeah, for, for this one above. Seven F100, um, so it airs out on 22s. Coyote 10 speed auto. Um, you come through the back here. Uh, we start, I think we started gapping some doors, etc. etc. And then, yeah, you can see in the back here the, the chassis. This was the chassis that went to Motor X last year. Um, so, yeah, it's a nice clean one. Pretty proud of this one. It was one of the, one of the first ones we built a while back, and yeah. challenges are as in when building these cars to getting them on the ground and um, that sort of thing. Yeah, clearance issues are always fun. Um, everything's clearanced. Everything we everything is like yeah, down to the mills. We don't have a lot of time to to get it wrong. Um, we've 
Yeah, with basically everything, it's so dialed in with CAD that by the time it gets made, it just fits. Yeah. So you find the, the digital side, as in computer programming and everything, has made a massive difference to... Yeah, it's changed, to the... it's changed us for sure. Like we can take a long time to do and design the actual whole chassis, but by the time it's cut, you know, between four and six weeks, it's on the ground rolling. So, it's a, yeah, it's a lot, a lot, lot faster. So with my background in design, I've always had an interest in machine design, especially the very technical side of, of design and getting all the tolerances and fittings and everything right. We know that it's going to fit. We know that it's going to work. Um, we know how it's going to work even before we even get any metal to, to build the thing. Um, so it's, it's very powerful from that aspect. So my name is Julian Poole. I specialize in mechanical design. Uh, my background is mechatronics engineering. I've always had an interest in machine design, especially the very technical side of, of design and getting all the tolerances and fittings and everything right. I hadn't necessarily had a interest in automotive stuff per se. I did like it, but it wasn't really in depth. Um, since coming on here with Bo, Bo's taught me a lot of things about uh, the car industry and the designing for cars. Um, so we've been able to put that information together and, and between the two of us we've come up with some very nice designs nowadays. As computer technology advances and uh, specifically the VR side of things, um, we'll be constantly pushing the limits, so i um, very excited to see where that goes. We're, we're uh, currently testing uh, VR uh, equipment to be able to walk around our models in, in real size. Um, be able to have multiple people in the room on different places around the globe uh, to be able to comment and, and um, share their thoughts on the design, which is very powerful. And being able to even use uh, hand tracking to model uh, very basic shapes for things. Um, another 67 F100 again. Um, we'll get this one down actually and have a look in the rear. This, um, this whole tub's tilt. They're all the hinges that we've designed for the rear. So the whole thing, the whole tub tilts off 45 degrees. Yeah, right, okay. So, yeah, so basically um, it's fairly, fairly hectic. Adam's, um, Adam's infill sheeted the whole thing. Um, everything's curved to match all the, the window design. So one of those back ends to really sort of sit well with that window. Everything's really square inside these tubs and sort of really in industrial, I guess, sort of like pretty uh, straight off, straight out of the 60s. So it's, uh, we sort of just tried to bring it up to speed. And um, if you come around and have a look, you can, you can see on the back here, everything's curved. Um, none of it's been metal finished yet. It's probably a bit more work to go, but you can have a little sneak, sneaky look at it. But uh, the customers are stoked. We've got a rear skin that's been folded up. Um, so yeah, it's still, uh, still a way to go on the bodywork. But, um, but yeah, we're almost there on the tub, so that's good. So what is it about basically the patina look that you like compared <laughs> to the... So I love patina trucks or patina any cars. Um, yeah, there's a, another one out there. That, but um, I don't know, I just, I think they're their original paint. They've seen days that, that you know, that I haven't. Um, and yeah, I don't know something about it. <laughs> Call this Adam's Corner. So Adam's got sheet metal and folders and guillotines and whatever needs to happen. Mick's, Mick's not normally in there. We just moved Mick today because we're um, working on that 30, 3100. Um, that's Michael. <laughs> and Adam's down the back here just getting this tub set. Um, basically, we're doing some modifications with the, the rear guards to get the 20s underneath to still get it to lay out. Um, and then also not change the aesthetics and the lines, how they flow through from the bottom of the guards. So we're adding in 50 mil, basically in the front of the tub, 
uh, which is going to lift the tub up and also proportion the car. I'm not sure if, you, uh, yeah, if you've seen many of them, um, but the 3100s, when you look them from the side, the, the, the tubs are quite low. So it was really critical that we sort of we did that and also we're fixing two problems here, two birds, one stone situation. So we come over and we have a look at it. Um, so you can see um, all the front end geometry here. We use Rod Hadfield spindles, um, so all Australian tested, stamped, approved. Um, yeah, it's that one. And then the whole chassis underneath this one's full frame replacement again. Um, our own nine inch diffs, our housings, we use, we basically just do the housings only. Um, and then we get the, the ends and centers put in in, in town. Um, yeah, it's Adam's in here, you can poke your head out. <laughs> He's in there doing his thing. Um, but this is another customer's car, obviously. And yeah, I'm looking forward to that one being on the, on the ground. It's, um, right-hand drive conversion as well. Um, LS sitting under it. Uh, so, you know, it's sort of the same thing, all the bells and whistles. We use Airlift as all of our air ride supplies um, from Air Ride, obviously. Um, yeah. And I believe you can actually get things passed through engineering mm. on CAD before yep. it even gets built. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah, so we can do what's called an FEA analysis on whatever we build. And basically that's applying forces, um, twists, loads, fixtures, whatever we need to the part. And what the program does is it will break that model up into a bunch of triangles and it applies the physics to those triangles, which is just maths at the end of the day, and gets a very realistic result for what it would do in the real world if we did exactly those fixtures, exactly those forces, etc. Um, the the uh, limit here, I suppose, is how small we make those triangles. If we make those triangles really small, we get a much more accurate result. However, it takes a lot more time to process. It can take weeks uh, to do a single model. Um, it does depend on how powerful your computer is, of course. Um, but at the end of the day, we, we generally start with a quite large triangle size, see if anything's wrong, get finer and finer and finer until we are um, satisfied that it's gonna work well. And that can be half of the whole uh, tick off of the engineering side of things can be done that way. Generally, we will still get a physical model. We will apply those loads still just to make sure nothing's gonna go wrong. Um, but way before that, the computer already knows that it's, it's pretty good. And so we can move forward pretty confidently. So this is my 59 Ford tank coupe. Um, I only got it yesterday. Um, so all we've done is gurney it. Uh, plan is to be on the ground rails again. How'd you um, come across it? Um, I sold some parts to a guy who um, who happened to have it. So then when I went to buy some parts off him, I saw it there and pretty much just fell in love with it and had no choice but to buy it. Um, it'll be the first sedan that we've done at the shop. Um, it's good because there's a um, there's a '56 Bel Air four door coming up as well. Um, so once you know once we get one of these in, obviously it's just better to only truck trucks, but um, that niche, we love trucks, I love trucks, I will always do that. Um, but yeah, personally, I just got excited by this two-door patinaed uh, coupe, basically matches my truck. Um, so yeah, I sort of had no choice, really. <laughs> <laughs> so how long has it been sitting around for? Uh, I got imported 20 years ago. Um, so all the import papers are, are all good, but they're basically, um, it, it didn't look as bad as this, but the Australian sun has given it a nice sunburn. Um, Giving it the right finish. Yeah, it's so cooked, cooked, cooked the roof and the, all the guys are buying it. It was painted on a Monday and the rest on a Friday because that survived. <laughs> but um, the interior is completely stuffed. Um, it runs, it drives. Uh, just yeah, basically uh, needs a lot of love. Yeah, where, where do you see the industry going? The industry going? Um, I want to see the industry going to, um, in the direction that we are trying to, to push it is, uh, is frame replacements. Um, and basically just way safer, way more like ADR approved, like VAS engineered approved. Um, just trying to get the industry across the line where it's, it's a, a much easier product for the customer. So I mean, I've built a bunch of cars in my time and you know, it's a lot of stuffing around, a lot of time and it always costs more money than you think. With the structure that we have around our chassis, there's a bulk price, people know what they're getting. You can roll in a chassis, you can unbolt a car, put it straight on and then your build's already off the ground and ready and going. So.